Good evening and welcome to the Corporate Scrutiny Committee of Tamworth Borough Council on the 6th of September. Um, we've had apologies from Councillor Samuel Smith and we have Andrew Cooper as a substitute, so thank you for that. Uh, we've also had apologies from Jason Jones and Sheree People and we're expecting John Wade, but he's, he's not here at the moment. Uh, Danny Cook, do you know anything about John Wade? Okay, all right, he might come later then. I um, just want to remind members that the meeting is being recorded and will be uploaded to YouTube. Um, I'm assuming apart from John, we don't have any any other apologies. No. Good. Uh, minutes. The minutes of the previous meeting held and chaired by Danny Cook on the 16th of August 2022 are here for approval. I wasn't here, so can I request a mover and a seconder, please? Okay, so moved by Councillor Cook and seconded by Councillor Harper. All those in favour? Yep, go for it. So, yeah, uh, not a problem for this evening, but obviously at the last meeting we moved two reports to carry on. Obviously, quarterly performance reports uh, where we could do it properly, and obviously uh, the market update, we could get an officer along to do it a little bit more thoroughly. I just wondered, is that going in some point later in the year about the market update? If we didn't have um, officers present, then I think we should, yeah. Okay, so we'll note that for the end when we look at the forward plan, uh, the work plan. Thank you. All those in favour of the minutes? Yep, carried, thank you. Any declarations of interest to declare? I assume not, no. Nope. <clears throat> um, update from me, it's quite obvious just that we've scheduled in this extra meeting because uh, there's some holidays and absences for the last meeting we didn't the committee felt they didn't quite get to scrutinise the QPR report as much as we'd like, with the right input from officers and the leader. Um, so, next one, responses to reports of the Corporate Scrutiny Committee that are none, and no considerations of matters referred to us. Next one, forward plan. Is there anything on there since the last meeting that you've noted that you'd like to uh, add on? No. A couple of things to note, the Gungate Regeneration Programme, in terms of reference, has been added uh, to forward plan. That's a cabinet decision in November and identified to be considered here in October. If everyone's in agreement with that, we'll look at it later in the work plan, but it seems a good time to do it. Okay, and then that moves on to the main item, which is to look at the quarter one, 2022-2023 performance report for to have some input before it goes to cabinet. So I'll hand over to the leader of the council, Jeremy Oates, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, and thank you for reconvening this meeting. Um, so in front of you, you have the quarter one performance report that covers the period from April till June uh, this year. Uh, and as you rightly said, it comes to scrutiny before being considered by cabinet uh, later this week. Uh, so within the report, uh, you'll have updates as of the end of June for the recent recovery uh, program, uh, the corporate projects. There's also an element there where we cover the uh, red and amber items in terms of those projects uh, and highlight what's going on with those. Um, you've got the corporate projects based by priority and you've also got a general fund uh, MTFS update as well as the traditional uh, universal credit summary that we, that we normally bring to to corporate scrutiny. Uh, so they're the, the, the 10 elements uh, that are within the report and the appendices attached. Uh, don't intend to go through the, the report in full, uh, as I know members will have read it, uh, but I will pick out a couple of highlights. Uh, so if we look at, um, it's page 12 on my PDF, I've just opened the report from the website, uh, you'll see the section on reset and re uh, recovery and reset. Uh, and in the highlight report, uh, and you'll notice there's quite a bit of, uh, of red and amber there. Uh, so, in a nutshell, we have looked at the project, we've been continuing to work on the project, but with the opportunity that was given to us uh, a few months ago uh, by the government announcing the levelling up fund opportunities, uh, and full council at the start of July uh, submitting a bid for the levelling up fund, we have paused the, re the majority of the recovery and reset program awaiting the outcome of that, uh, of that bid. Uh, and the reason we've done that is because the uh, monies available and the opportunities available through the Leavening Up Fund uh, will, will solve a lot of the problems that we are trying to deal with with reset and recovery. 
so it's uh, it's an opportunity too good to have uh, to have, uh, have not taken uh, by by applying. Uh, so as a result, that's put the the project on hold uh, until uh, until October, which is when the next update is due uh, to cabinet. So that's why uh, a lot of that is showing as red. Uh, still, work is going on, but in terms of the decision making elements, uh, they're on hold. And the work that's going on includes things like the uh, uh, the decommissioning of, of Marmion House. Uh, it turns out that some of the floors that have been empty uh, for a while uh, are still connected to the electric and still connected to the heating system. So there's things like that that we can continue to do because we know ultimately uh, we, we're not going to reuse those floors. So so that was the, the, the reset and recovery uh, shift. Um, you'll notice in section two the list of uh, corporate projects uh, which are highlighted in uh, green amber or red there aren't any red at the moment and that just gives you an explanation as to as to what the situation is with those uh, particularly the the yellow ones those are in green we haven't put a commentary on because they're progressing as they as they should be um, in terms of the impact on the MTFS uh, and the budget of the council uh, as you'll see uh, this is from from quarter one and the uncertainty uh, that we had when we set the budget and the start of the year is, uh, is still there, if not worse now, because uh, we've had a significant lack of information uh, from government as to, as to what's going on with, the, uh, with, with, with uh, local government finance. Um, so we, we've tried to tailor in the anticipated impact uh, of the increases that, that we read about in the press uh, in terms of cost of, of living, in terms of inflation, and so on and so forth. And we try to anticipate those uh, and also anticipate how we're going to mitigate uh, so some of that going forward, but it is it is still the, the quarter one report. Uh, so so the majority of the issues around the MT, MTFS are led by the uncertainty as to what's going on uh, in government right now and what's going on with the with the economy going forward. Um, so they're the the big highlights really uh, for for the report, Mr. Chairman. And I'm uh, happy to discuss any other points or take questions. Thank you very much. Uh, I had a quick question actually. There's quite a lot that's linked to the corporate plan, right? 2022-2025. Could you give us an update on on the timeline for that to be ready and input that will go into that? Sorry, just clarify what you said there. I missed part of that. Uh, the corp there's lots on here that link to the corporate plan, 2022-2025, the June March. Could you give us an update on? Is that still on track? What's happening with that? Uh, all of these projects here sit within the three-year corporate plan that we set in February when we when we passed the budget. Uh, so what you've got here are the profiles of each project within this financial year, and that's why they've got the, the due date at the end of the financial year, is because it's for the reporting period. So so the, the corporate plan will roll out over the, over the next three years, uh, and within that there will be different projects that... That, that fall out of that in, in terms of in terms of delivering those priorities. Yeah, I think I worded that badly. I think what I'm, <laughs> there's someone there that are due March, for example. But I couldn't necessarily see them updated earlier on, or I've missed them earlier in the pack. Uh, let me just scroll and see if I can see one an example. So EV charging is one, for example. I couldn't see that elsewhere further up with an update. Right. So so EV charging is in green. So that's being delivered. Uh, according to the project, so, so that's why that's flagged up there. So, so in terms of the, the overall project, it's within this financial year, so that'll be delivered by. by yeah. I can, I can get. I just can't we see. Can, it. We can get more details oh, there we on the individual project. I found it. I found it. Third one down on page fifteen. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, we we can you know uh, there's there's a uh, what is there here eighty odd pages eighty two pages here but as you can imagine each one of those projects uh, has got its own project brief and. And, and thousands of pages attached. So, so if there's yeah, anything I just you want more clarity, I can find it, but yeah. I found it. So, okay. page fifteen, third one down. Mm -hmm. It's green. Okay. All right. Any questions from the committee? Councillor Cooper. Thank you. Um, yeah, just just looking at the 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 project list. Obviously, noting what you just said, um, Councillor Oates, that. Um, there's a lot of other detail that's associated with every single project work stream. I think for the purpose of this meeting and the smooth running of this meeting, I think it, it's all well and good that we have green ticks against everything. Um, but for me, I think for the report, wouldn't it be worth just focusing on the things we're not hitting rather than 
listing everything and then having a having a sort of a deep dive into the red items and then noting the amber items and why um that's the, personally that's what i'd like to see at the top of the report is what we're at risk of not delivering um and that brings me on to my next point with net zero can you just go into a bit more detail with that please because it seems as though um it's something that is probably never going to be achieved reading some of the comments um I think we can have a, a massive debate as to whether net zero is going to be achieved at Tamsborough Council or, or anywhere else, can't we? Um, in, in terms of, uh, of, of the net zero uh, project, uh, as you know, we've had a consultant uh, uh, working on this and that report should be coming to ISAG imminently, two weeks time, is it? Um, there'll, be, there'll, there'll be a lot in that report which will be either achievable, achievable by Tamsborough Council or unachievable by Townsborough Council or unachievable by, by anybody. So there'll be stuff that will be in there which we have no influence over. There'll be stuff that was in there that will be, you know, easy easy pickings, as it were. Um, and, and what I'm hoping that, uh, that scrutiny does before Cabinet gets, gets to it is goes through and looks at those and goes, well, actually, these bits should be the priority and we should get moving on those. Those other bits are, are longer term or with partners or whatever, and, uh, and, that, uh, and that follows up. Um, so, so when we get that... that uh, that baseline project, uh, that baseline report, we, we can build a project on that and start, you know, uh, start actually putting some 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 flesh uh, on on the bones on that project. Have you got anything to add on that, Andrew? Yeah, if I if I can do, I mean, I think the net zero is um, is is a real a real real issue. We've been very fortunate here at Tamworth over the last probably ten years. We've been tackling lots of little bits like some of the things we've been doing. One of the first authorities to use ultra-low sulphur diesel in its fleet. Um, you know, only a little thing, but it made, made a big difference. So our, our baseline, and because of our geographical size, is, is actually quite low. And we've, but we've got some big ticket items in there that are going to be really, really difficult to actually make a, a fundamental difference in. Um, and I think that's why they, yeah, the, the baseline is such an important document. Um, it's taken a while. Um, it, but it's been, uh, say, exceptionally sort of well researched and, uh, and and evidenced, and I think you know when it when it goes to scrutiny in um, I think it's the end of September, isn't it? It goes. Um, I, I think you know we really need to give that some consideration as to uh, what does it mean, what does it mean for the organisation, um, because uh, it, it comes as with everything, it comes with the price ticket. Um, but there's some things on there that actually you know it's it we've we've got to do something. It's the right thing to do. Um, I think it was Councillor Cook said ages ago um, when we put um, quite a large sum of contingency in the budget. Um, you know, th this this is not an option. Um, but we've just got to be very clear on how we can achieve it. Thanks. If, if I may, Mr Chairman, on the other point uh, about the, the, the greens, yellows and reds. Um, yeah, this, this report uh, com comes through scrutiny and over years has been tweaked by different scrutiny Committees, different chairman. So, so if you want, uh, if you want the format changing around, then just just make that make that suggestion. We can we can we can move it around. Uh, like you say, we've got the the ambers and reds um, on the next section, which is uh, in, in section three. Yeah. Maybe it's worth swapping them around and putting them on first, and having the greens underneath. You know, um, if you want more information on the greens, even if it's just a one liner, then we can we can pull that up and can I, address uh, the point that TJ, uh, sorry, Councillor Jay raised earlier. Councillor TJ, um, can I just come in there? So we have got a working group, um, I say set up, we haven't met yet because of holidays and stuff, but that would meet within the next month to look specifically at anything you want to tweak in the report. So if you want to come along to that or give me your input and we'll put it in that, then we'll, uh, we can put it in. Yeah, I think that might be prudent. I just think that we need to, we need to focus on, we need to prioritise it, don't we? It needs to be risk ranked, it needs to be prioritised, we need to focus on the big hitters first um and then the green ticks are fine if, they, if they're genuinely green ticks that's fine leave them alone let's put you know um officer resource and councillor resource on the things that are real issues um the things that we're that are sitting against a red tick why with a bit of detail in and then just move the move the green ticks to to, to sort of the more the bottom end of the report so that people can have a bit of a focus on the risk yeah, thank you. So I think we've, we have 
discussed in more detail the, the red dynamics before, but I think today you've got this statement that they're, they're linked to the things being put on hold rather than being issues. Okay, I had a question. Um, just in general, have, have you noticed an uptick in contact from residents um, because of the cost of living? Has there been any extra contact, any extra resource on that? Have you got some stuff there in terms of the universal credit stuff? It's just a claim. Yeah. Um, I'll let Andrew give you the details because he's just got that uh, the latest bit of information. But um, uh, in terms of this report, this is still quarter one, so there is a there are some changes, but it, it started to ramp up in, in, in quarter two in terms of uh, in terms of the, the cost of living crisis, uh, etc. Um, so there are some initial signs, um, but if you look at the apologies, if you look at the universal credit uh, applicants. There's not been a massive uptake in, in that during that first period. But uh, hand over to Andrew, because Andrew's got the latest uh, employment information and credit claims. Thank, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, and then bearing in mind, this is at July. So this is current data, not, not relating to the period of this report. Um, specifically in Tamworth, we saw an upturn in um, claimants of 2.1%. So that related to just over 1,700 individual applications. It's, it's marginal. Um, we are one of the higher districts, in fact, we're the highest district in Staffordshire. Um, but all bar Newcastle under Lyme are giving a positive um, uptick in, in the claimant counts. OK, thank you. And then in, in terms of the impact of Tambor accounts and the, and the budget, has, has that now been factored in? Is that going to have a major impact with the cost being totally out of sync to what was forecast? Sorry, could you clarify? Is that in terms of contact or in terms of our, our general costs? Um, I'm talking about energy and stuff like that that's right. higher than factored into the, the budget. Yeah, if you look at... I'm trying to find the page number now. Just bear with me. I've got a great appendices which I can see in my head, but I can't see it. There we go. What page is that? 39. Yeah, so if we look at pages uh, 39 in terms of the general fund and 40 in terms of, of the HRA, um, you'll see what we've, we've got there is some uh, anticipated in, impact and anticipated uh, uh, outturns. Uh, so if you look in the, in the second uh, set of bullet points on page 39, uh, you'll see that there's anticipated impact on, on, on car, parking, uh, uh, car parking income uh, there's uh, a reduction in council tax and, and court cost income. Uh, there's uh, anticipated uh, uh, anticipated changes uh, relating to inflation and, and cost pressures. Uh, so what we've done there is, uh, if you look there in quarter one, uh, we've looked at a quarter million pound increase in uh, in the impact on uh, on the authority in terms of those rising cost pressures uh, with, um, with with energy and, and general inflation in the general fund. We've done the same in the HRA. Uh, but what we've also done on those pages is identified additional income uh, and additional uh, uh, additional say, uh, yeah, savings, for want of a better phrase, which will mitigate against those. So it's a work in progress. It's constantly being reviewed. Uh, but those two pages just highlight some of the things that we're, we're, we're anticipating. Uh, in terms of is, is a quarter million pound increase in uh, any anticipated costs enough, that's what we're going to have to continue to monitor on a on an almost daily basis and, uh, and react accordingly. Okay, thank you. And then another question along the same kind of lines, not necessarily linked to Q1, but as we've got you both here. Um, when when there was the amount um, announced, I can't remember what it was now, there was, a, there was a fixed amount given to to people that earned a certain amount towards their bills, right? We found that a lot of people contacted the council, right, wanted to know where the money was, but really the government hadn't paid it yet. Is, are we expecting some kind of influx like that again? Because if the, there's, there's due to potentially be something announced the next month or week or so, even though it's not going to come from the council, people are going to assume it is. Is there anything um, factored in for that? Um, I think it's unlikely um, any energy cap will become the responsibility of, of, uh, of the district council. It's been delivered currently by the energy providers. 
So I don't think, and I'm certainly not seeing anything at the moment where there'll be another um, rebate issued through through sort of council tax process. Um, so I think, famous last words, but I think it's unlikely um, on what we know at this moment in time. Okay. If, if, if I may, Mr. Chairman, in terms of the first part of, of that question, um, when the rebate happened a few months ago, uh, we, we saw an increase in our workload. So, so the staff that were processing those rebates were processing those rebates as opposed to doing other things in terms of their, their normal day-to-day -day work. Um, and if you, you look at some of, the, uh, uh, some of the information on what page am I on? Page 20, sorry, page 30. Uh, around the, the processing time of housing benefit and council tax uh, benefit claims, uh, you'll see there was a slight, uh, a slight delay in turning those around from, from 8.5 days to 10.3 during that period when rebates were being, were being processed. So, so there, was an, there was an impact on, on our day-to-day -day work as a, as a result of processing those. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Danny, Councillor Cook. Yeah, I've got quite a lot of questions, Mr. Chairman. Do you want me to just go through the list, or do you want me to just stop just, off a couple of times? Or I'll just, uh, if you feel that a few are linked, go for a few okay. and then give them a chance to answer. Well, I mean, firstly, a comment on two subjects that's been discussed already, as Councillor Oates will agree. When the budget was set in February 2022, obviously there is a section in there called sensitivity analysis that shows any impact on inflation and how it affects the council, you know, half a percent here, half a percent there, up or down, and what the impact is. So the council does, through this process, already have a monitoring process through the sensitivity analysis so yeah it's a fair question uh, I did have a question on the net zero on page nine uh, Councillor Cooper's already raised it absolutely you know as Mr Barrett has said I did historically say it's not a question of trying to do it. we've got to somehow do it as an authority my concern is and it was no different when I was leader of the council is when it gets too difficult we just don't do it and that there's a reality to that and perfect example is when we read standard for street scene vehicles it was just too expensive to go go electric vehicles it was just too difficult for us to work it out and there's a truth to how much money we've got versus what we want to achieve but there's another side to it as well which we've obviously got to ask ourselves at some point is and it's a simple thing if we sit here as a collection of councillors saying we're committed at some point to getting to as close as we can to net zero and stop polluting our atmosphere i assume we won't be sending any fireworks up in november then because the truth is fireworks are polluting. Could we look at laser shows or something different? And that's a question for another time. It's just a comment I had on the net zero side, but fireworks at that, you know, at that amount are polluting to the atmosphere. And if we're committed to net zero, we need to ask ourselves as a, a council at some point, do we want to keep doing that when laser shows and other options are out there? But that's for another day. Um, yeah, first question is obviously on page two, as part of reset and recovery, we've got building requirements and utilization. Uh, Re sorry, rationalisation of Marmion House workshops with officers on the 3rd of August to review decommissioning, investment spending, mothballs and reduce space requirements and overheads. Obviously that was discussed on the 3rd of August. Do we have an update please? Um, do I have an update on it? Uh, only in as much as the agreement at that point was that we paused um, the work because of the, the loft bid. Um, the actual decommissioning process is being is, is still um, un underway, although not physically um, being planned at the moment, to try and understand what could we do to reduce our occupation of Barmian House now, whilst we're waiting for um, detail on the loft bid. Um, as we all know, it's a hulking great big building. Uh, we, we're dotted about all over in it. Actually, can we just shut off? various floors so as it's um we don't have to clean them we don't have to heat them we don't have to light them there'll be a natural saving in that in uh, you know in, in our sort of carbon footprint as well as our cost footprint whilst we wait outcome of luff um as you know part of the luff bid was looking at new offices which are, um makes makes more sense um particularly as we it would probably be unwise at the moment to invest in alternative promises either through a lease or through refurbishing some of our own stock, which we've looked at, um, in the uncertainty that actually, if we are successful in Luff, then it will be a complete wasted effort for the short space of time that we've got, um, hopefully, for the Luff announcement. Sorry, follow up on that? Sorry, just struggling to understand the link there. We've got to get out of Miami and House, or Cook no matter what, at some point. Why pause? If the Luff is going to be 
announced long before we plan a building. Uh, what, why, I just don't understand why we've paused, because we've still got to get out of mind and ask whether we get the Luff money or not. So, so why have we paused? I don't understand why we've paused. So we've paused the investment in a different property. So, so what was on the table before was there was a reinvestment in one of our own properties, uh, or there was investment in a in a rental property. So that's the bit we're we're holding off. Yeah, uh, because if we get the award, then we'll build a new place and we won't invest in somebody else's. You know, so so the stuff that's happening to Marmion House, that project's still running, but it's the it's the investment in a new home whether it was short term or long term that we've paused. Because if, if love comes through, that's a long term solution and it's done. If it doesn't come through, it's another, do we have a medium term or uh, uh, what's our forever home? You know, so, so that's the bit that's, that's paused. So the decommissioning bit and the planning is still, is still rolling out. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor. That's a bit clearer. Uh, yeah, still on page two, uh, smart working, removed from programme June 2022. Uh, review, re review received in July and discussion at the Ops meeting on the 27th of August. Obviously, from what I'm reading here, uh, smart working was removed from the programme and it was rediscussed on the 22nd of August. Can you just have some more detail on that, please? Yeah, the smart working um, programme is now finished. It's concluded. Staff are on new terms and conditions. So there, there is no more smart working programme. It's achieved what it set out to within the original scope. That should have said that in the report. Really. It would have been clear if it's in the yeah, report, yes. Apologies, though. No, no, thank you, Councillor. Yeah. I was about to say the same thing, because that's very misleading. Yeah. But yeah. I, I would fully understand that. I mean, it's, it's, that. Wrong, it's wrong to say. It won't be, it, it's, of course, it's revisited. But it's the, the actual um, uh, smart working programme is now completed. Um, as you know, we've got the various categories of worker. Um, whether it be home, hybrid, or, uh, or office. So uh, that, that bit is, uh, it, is, is complete and done and delivered against what it needed to. Thank you, Councillor Jay. Uh, still on page two, um, obviously the section around the third sector. Obviously, just, just trying to understand this part. Uh, offers required to key decisions around premises. Um, yeah, obviously, when we're talking voluntary sector, what level are we talking premises around the voluntary sector because at the minute we don't house that many voluntary sectors compared to what we used to do i'm just trying to understand why it mentions premises just it's, it's more around what the voluntary sector needs rather than what we're going to offer them so it's part of the uh, working with um as a as sort of as, as a facilitating organization rather than uh, rather than how housing them if uh, if, if necessary Thank you again. Uh, just yeah, just going back to Councillor Cooper's points about you know being very clear what we're saying in these reports. If you look at the corporate project summary, it's on page four. If you look at it on the laptop, I think it's the first page of the appendices after page thirteen. If you're looking at it on paper, obviously there's some blanks on there. Obviously, I don't think it's good housekeeping to have it in blank because the answers to those are elsewhere in the report. If you go see, but if we're going to have a table on there, can we make sure it's filled in just so we ensure? We're not having to fist through the report constantly backwards and forwards because I had quite a few questions on there. But having finished reading the entire report, I'd answered my own questions, and it would have just been much simpler rather than set me up to go looking. Yeah, I think we um, that's another one we add to that. Why well, so it's one to note now, but we'll add it to the working group as well. So. Yeah, I was, I was going to I was going to ask that now you've said there's a working group that can be considered because you do find within this report there's a. A, a lot of repetition uh, and it's it's not repetition as in copy and paste it's repetition of the same issues just presented in in different ways with different details so so if that working group can pick that up and thrash that out then yeah I'm, I'm all ears for for reducing the 82 pages uh, down, down to down to you know something that means something back to you thank you sir I feel, I feel like I'm still in the show tonight Mr Chairman I do apologize uh, page five, obviously, is part, again, the project summaries. Uh, you've got four flying down, Solway, ticked nice and green. Just want to understand, you know, we ticked something nice and green that's never done anything other than cost us, I think, £3,000 a year in accounts fees. And obviously, that's been the case for a long time. This is not an attack on anything current. That's been the case for a long time. I'm just looking for an update of what is Solway going to do? Are we just getting to the point where we realise we set it up in case it could do something, which was the case, but we haven't really found anything for it technically to do. We do have a piece of land that we've historically talked to putting through it. I just want an update of where we are with Solway, if that's possible. Thanks, yeah. yeah this, the, the title again is probably hindsight's a great thing, isn't it? The title doesn't refer to Solway Trading Company. 
title refers to Solway land, uh, cabinet agreed disposal, uh, marketing disposal of that land um, last month, I think it was. Um, July. July, yeah, as a um, slightly different direction, more cost effective direction of delivering what we need to. So the company is still present, still, still there. And as and when there is a need to use it, it's certainly the intention of the organisation to, to use it, but it's, it's, it's not there necessarily for a defined purpose at this point in time. Uh, and, and if I may, um, you're absolutely right. It's been, it's been there for a while and, you know, are we going to use it or not is, is a question that, that we really need to ask. Um, yeah, this, this line here isn't about the, the trading company, uh, but just on the trading company, uh, the, the reason it's been inactive more recently is there's been a lot of, a lot of stuff going on with pandemics, with future hardship funds and, and everything else. Uh, so it probably is due to have a, you know, a serious question of what are we going to do with it and, and, you know, uh, and, and can it deliver what we originally set out for it to deliver or, or is it time for a change of direction or is it time to, to, you know, to, to get it working? So I think we're probably at a point where, where we ought to be having those discussions. So, yeah, absolutely. Thank you again, Councillor Jay. Uh, page seven, uh, local council tax reduction scheme, uh, banded scheme, sorry. Obviously, this one's been kicking around for a long, long time as well. I remember first having a conversation with Councillor Pritchard when he was the portfolio in 2018 about how we'd redo the different bandings for people on council tax benefit. And it's just bounced around ever since. And obviously, this update here tells us that yet again, we're kicking it down the street because we still don't know the answer. I'm just wondering at what point do we accept there isn't an answer and actually the scheme we've got works and let's stop playing around with this like we've been playing around with it for the best part of five years when there isn't an answer because if there was an answer, I'm pretty confident our very professional and very capable account staff would have figured it out. Is it time to accept this, this rebanding isn't the answer because we just keep bouncing it around every year and like I say, it's been a long time now. Uh, couldn't agree more. Uh, I, I suspect that we're under pressure to keep it on the, on the radar from... Uh, from the same government government that's uh, that's not telling us how much our settlement will be for the next two years. Um, I've got to that, yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, you're absolutely right. It, it keeps coming up. Uh, if if we had the answers, then we would have done it years ago. Uh, and it's one of those that's yeah, it, it appears here, but it's going to continue to come up while we've got the pressure to to, to keep it alive here. Yeah. Do you have more, more questions? I do. I don't know if you have any questions. I seem to catch myself up on the report, so I can just do one second. Anybody else? Councillor Cooper. Just to give you a bit of a break from uh, Councillor Cox's voice, I suppose, the, my dulcet tones. Um, the page 24, general fund actual spend summary. Um, this might just be my naturally suspicious assurance head on um the <laughs> the quarterly values versus the quarterly targets seemed awfully close together for um for graphs that seem to go up and down in nice little waves and yet the targets seem to follow the actuals very closely are there is that a, is that a true reflection um i believe so and if you look at them most of them are uh, as a result of the of the vacancy allowances uh, rather, rather than anything else, which is, uh, uh, yeah, which, which is something we, we, we budget for each year. Um, Andrew, are these a true reflection? Um, they are profiled against the anticipated spend, along with the available budget. So on that premise, yes, they are a true reflection. Um, I think what is slightly misleading in the graphs is the fact that I'm not convinced they're all to the same scale so they look quite different um, otherwise they're fairly meaningless if you if you sort of take um, my cost centre which is the top left um, looks like there's some phenomenal variances in, in there um, that is all through um, the vacancy allowance of my staff of um, two I think there are in, in there so if you put that on a different scale, it would almost be a, le a level line. <laughs> um, but yeah, they, um, it, what does it mean? It was something scrutiny asked for a um, couple, couple, three years ago. Um, and it's, it's never been a perfect way of representing, I think, what's 
that the, the commit, committee actually wants, but it's probably the, it's, it's the only way we could represent it, because we profile our spend and we know what the available budget is. So it's 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 purely that calculation. So what what we found before having these graphs was that you will see there, for example, it might be just for example here, like Q1 always dips, yeah, that's right? Cumulative. Right. So what happened before we had those graphs is that every Q1. You'd be asking, well, why is it so different this quarter? And this has stopped those questions, essentially. So I, th I think I think what your problem might be is um, it's normally a problem I find with council reports is the graphs are very focused on a on a on a very small number of quarters. I think if they were broadened out a bit, they'd look um, a, a lot better because you've got more data sets in there that offer a better. At the, at the minute they they go up like that and they 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 trace the. Um, the actuals and the targets trace almost too well. Come back on that, so I think it's quite an important point. With us only accurately budgeting in 12 month periods, because that's what we have to do, it's very difficult to use historic data because budgets change. Mm. And it could be very misleading if there is a policy change in for so, so doing something differently, it'll throw out a completely different set of figures, which immediately you think, wow, what's, what's going on there? So it, I'm, I'm not sure there's a right or wrong way of, of, of doing it. It's really there as a visual indication of, of you know, are, are, are things okay? So that's helpful. Um, yeah, like I say, we can we look at it in the working group. That's what it's there for. But we've, we we did find it it removed a lot of unnecessary questions about movements from one quarter to the other. Uh, Danny, Councillor Cook. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Jeff. Found my place again. Uh, I'm actually going to stare at Councillor Cooper while I ask this question. <laughs> uh, obviously, bottom of page eight from the laptop. I think it's page eighteen if you're on paper. 31st of May 2022, the environmental health team reviewed their templates in 2019, but no further work on making them assure compliance has been undertaken. Should we be concerned about that? I know there's been some staffing issues in environmental health, but that's a statement that gives me pause for concern. Uh, that's in relation to the uh, the movement to the new assure process uh, data, what do you call it? System, computer system uh, for, for environmental health. Uh, and there, there has been some issues uh, and you're absolutely right to raise that as uh, as a concern. Um, what I can tell you is we've now got a resource in place to catch that up and do that piece of work. Uh, so so that, that is now resourced and in action, whereas uh, a short while ago it, it wasn't, and hence the situation it was in there. Andrew, do you want to come back on that? Yeah, and I just, I think, probably as a bit of reassurance, um, the phrase compliant in there doesn't mean to say they are not unlawfully compliant it means that they are compliant with the new Assure system. So work has been underway using the old M3 system. Um, so it, it's not a case of we haven't been delivering work. It's effectively the, the IT, the, the, the upgraded IT system has, um, ha hasn't been delivered as, uh, as quickly as it should have been. Um, but again, I think there is, for once I'll say a very um, clear, that the, the environmental health team particularly um, with COVID, COVID recovery and everything else have been absolutely focusing on growth and making sure the economy is, is, is getting up and running rather than some of the more detailed housekeeping um, issues. But they're now back on it. Uh, if I may add to that, Mr Chairman, um, in that same section that you, you, you raised, Councillor Cook, uh, NEC have said that M3 is likely to be de-supported in 12 months. So we've got to get this done. Otherwise, we, we, we're going to be in trouble. So yeah, the, the, the pressure and the emphasis is, is on there. Uh, can I move a motion then, Mr Chairman, that the next meeting of corporate scrutiny we receive an update uh, on this, because this is not something we can, as uh, Councillor Rose just rightly said, when the other system drops offline, we can't afford to miss this. So I, just, just the way that's phrased gives me pause for concern. So can we request in the next meeting of corporate scrutiny that an update is sent to reassure us we're back on track and everything's being delivered? I hope for a second for that motion, Mr Chairman. I'm happy to second. I don't know if we need necessarily need a one second. Don't we necessarily need a, a motion if we we can add it to the work plan and just request an update. But do you want to come in there? Sorry, I wasn't seconding it, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I, I was going to ask for clarity before you move on to to the vote, and, and I think you've just raised it there. Do you want a, a written update for the chairman to give at the introduction, or do you want something more than that 
uh, as a report. It was just asking for, for feedback, that's all. So I think we take it away and look when we could get it in and when something meaningful could come and then plan it in from there for the next available meeting after, for, after that. What would you say? Uh, I think, Mr Chairman, once you get a, a rough update from the officer team and where they are with it, we then make a decision of, actually, this is a problem, we now need to drag it back in, or actually, we've caught it up, it's on time, and we, we just get a quick one-page update, so, yeah, it's all fine now. I, I'm with Councillor Cooper, it's not a problem, let's not labour it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just, yep. just the wording on it and compliance and assure, it just gives you a pause at the moment that we don't want to miss this. Yep. So I think we're all in agreement on, on that, then. Going to come back in? Yeah, I'm just genuinely not in order of importance, sort of following the pages where I picked up the questions. Um, this is probably a silly question, and to be honest, nobody's life is going to change either way, whether you agree with me or disagree with me, Council Oates, to be honest, but it's just a pure of curiosity when I saw it. Obviously, in the vision, you've got um, living in Tamworth, and at the bottom, at the top of that, you've got Corporation Street, and then item number five, you've got Town Centre. I just wonder why Corporation Street's not in the Town Centre section, whereas in Living in Tamworth section. I, I'm just curious. It, it's not going to change anybody's life if you leave it or move it. Uh, th th there'll be a few that, appear, that, that relate to different ones. Um, I'll, I'm pleased you've raised the, the Corporation, Street, uh, uh, Corporation Street project. It is a standalone project in terms of it's a gateway project with the... Do you, do you remember the old, um, sorry, the slightly historic now, uh, Staffordshire County Council, Tamworth Borough Council Gateways Project? So it's a Staffordshire County Council project that we're involved with. Uh, so, so it does sit separate to our town centre regeneration uh, projects and, uh, and, and themes. Uh, but you're absolutely right, it, it, it could sit within, within each, either one. It actually needs review. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it actually needs reviewing as a project in itself uh, and probably going into too much detail. But you'll remember we dropped it from the future High Street Fund bid because it didn't fit that particular fund. That was a couple of years ago. Things have changed in the world since then. Um, there's been changes with the, uh, the engagement between the County Council, uh, the Borough Council and, and Arriva. Uh, and also uh, that project isn't funded. Uh, so actually it's, it's probably due for a for a rethink anyway, uh, because it's, uh, it's just sort of sitting on the shelf, not doing a great deal at the moment. So that is, that is something we're, uh, we ought to be looking at as a, as a refresh for, a, you know, is it still correct? Is it the right thing to do or do we need to change it? Thank you. Can I come back in? We've got that added to the. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Plan, right? uh, page 20. Um, obviously, when we're looking at benefits, um, it says um, life case life case load figures currently at 5,198 compared to 5,575 at 30th June 2001, 5,628 at 31st of March, 5,337 31st of March, 55 etc etc etc. So just looking at this. So what's been granted is, last year, uh, sorry, this year we've granted 43 of 98, which I make to be 43.9%. Against last year, we granted 60 of 82, which was 73%. So obviously of the ones we've granted, we dropped from 73% approval to 43% approval. Is there actually a reason for that? Is it, is it due to COVID was more pressing last year? I just want to understand why we've had such a drop in, in approvals. It's just such a big jump. And also, can we see it in future as a percentage? Because it, it is enlightening. Um, that's in terms of the, the discretionary housing payments, isn't it? Um, I, I'd have to get that, that detail to you as, as to why there's been such a, uh, such a drop. I don't know if Andrew's got... No, Andrew's scribbling down, so that's, uh, that's something we'll have to, have to get back to. In terms of the percentage, yeah, you're right. Figures mean nothing to that, yeah. Yeah, I'd be grateful for that, because obviously there's nothing we can solve by discussing it this evening. We, we need to understand it, so if I could get a, an answer on... It just, like I said, from a percentage point of view, it's such a big leap downwards, isn't it? So we'll do the usual then, Joe, get a written answer and then distribute to everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Councillor Cook. Uh, obviously, it was briefly mentioned earlier, and obviously... 
the rebate situation didn't help. Uh, there remains a backlog of processing correspondence due to additional workload created by the payments of significant levels of grant. The revenues billing team backlog increased from 32 days at the end of March 2022 to 41 days at the end of June 2022. 41 days backlog sounds horrific to me. I just want to understand it a bit further. I can't see the exact sentence you're reading there, but uh, Andrew, do you want to pick that up? Because we, yeah, we, we, we discussed this uh, recently, didn't we, Andrew? So uh, do you want to pick that up? I mean, this, this is at the first quarter. Um, they have actually put additional resource into the team now to, uh, to, to, to catch up with that. But the priority at the time was to, um, to get, the, um, get the grants and, and reliefs out. So that was a conscious decision to do that. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr Barrett. F fully understand that. But are we still sat on 41 days? Where are we currently? don't know where we are currently, but additional resource was put into it to, uh, to actually manage that backlog. But, um, I mean, that will appear in quarter two performance report. So I would expect that to be. Is there any chance we can get an update on where they think they are currently? You know, if, as long as the trend's in the right direction, I fully understand the rebate has to take some priority. I just want to understand, is the trend going in the right direction? And I'm not looking for hard and fast figures, just, just an indication from you know, Mr Buckland, who I trust immensely, fellow Liverpool fan. So, you know... Uh, yeah, uh, on page 32, we've got an update on our property fund investments. Obviously, when we first went into property funds with the revenue, well, sorry, capital we achieved from uh, turning the golf course into houses, there was a decision taken to invest a lot of that capital in property, property funds to turn the capital into future revenue income. We've always known capital's not always been Tamworth Borough Council's biggest problem. It's always been, you know, the revenue budgets. <coughs> Pardon me. Obviously, I'm noting on here that some of the property funds have dropped below 4%, when the target that we went into property funds was to achieve 4 to 5%. Obviously, we're in a different economic world than when we first entered. We've been through you know, the pandemic and everything else that came with it. I'm just wondering, if it continues along that trend, does it still meet our financial modelling and the targets that the, you know, the accounts team set themselves to actually achieve that income? Because obviously value for money, we have to hit our internal targets and the value for money. And while it's dropped below, do we have an indication it's going to go back up again? Is it going to remain there? How does it sit with our value for money? I'm sort of dragging this out now, aren't I? Yeah, I mean, it's, um, it is still the most prudent way of investing our available capital. Um, I, I can't answer the question, does it m meet our internal targets? Um, what I can answer is it's the very best we can do at this point in time. Uh, the interesting bit is the fund value has shown capital growth as well as a revenue return. So um, have they achieved what they set out to? Yes, absolutely. Um, I, I wish I could get 3.61% average on, um, on, on savings at the moment. It's, um, you know, it's, it's a very, very good return and to get the fund value cr growth as well, um, I think just actually um, signifies it was quite a shrewd investment when they were, when they were taken out. Um, but is, is the, the market appears to be quite stable. It hasn't really moved um, a lot, certainly over the last 12 months. So, um, you know, I think it's still uh, delivering what it needs to, uh, to, to deliver as, a, as an investment strategy. And of course, Treasury, I think, is going to full council couple of weeks time as well so obviously there'll be uh, further opportunity um, to, to, to look at that as well okay thank you that's cook you'd be pleased to hear mr chairman the last two um, on page 23 obviously there's a section on rent arrears uh, obviously states you know, at june 2022 there was 731k compared to 519k at this point um, earlier in the year an increase of 202k um, I've got two parts to this question, really, is do, do we know why there's been such a big increase? Is it cost of living? Is it other factors? And secondly, any chance we can start seeing that as a percentage of the overall rent collection? Because while 731k sounds a horrific figure, we all know if you're collecting 20-odd million per year in the HRA from Garage and Council, all of a sudden you start doing a bad debt over seven years, it might be less than 1%, and it's not the problem you might think it is. So to see it as a percentage and the, how we control our long-term debt in the HRA, actually, rather than seeing a horrific figure... 
I, I remember Councillor Andrew James asking me many years ago, why is the £1.7 million in uncollected rent in the HRA? I said, that's over seven years bad debt. It's less than 1%. That's actually a good achievement. It's just, can we see that? It's just a request as a percentage and you know what time scale that carries over? Because it sounds horrific, but I suspect it's not as horrific as you think it is. Yeah, so, go on. Um, yeah, we probably can. The only thing that I'm thinking of, and I think you've, I think you've suggested it in, in your question, is the complexity of how many of those are current tenants, how many of those are former tenants, and, and breaking it down. Um, so, so whilst I see where you, where you try, what you're trying to achieve in a percentage, you'll probably end up with a table with a gross percentage and then percentages of, uh, of short-term uh, debt or... Possibly a little bit longer, but we'll have a graph and then we'll change it again. No. Um, yeah, so, yeah, we could probably do that, but it's, it's, it might take a bit of refining. We might have to have a bit of a to, a to and fro just to get what you want out of that because, it, like you say, it breaks down. It's a bit complex, isn't it? You know? I mean, my point is that I hate looking at what look like horrific figures when in reality we all know because we've been here long enough. Actually, it's not as horrific as you think it is when you add it up over seven years of bad debt. Yeah, and you're, you're absolutely right. And as you know, I sit on the county council as, as well. And I'll sit on the county council, as, as you do, Councillor Jay, uh, and, and it's not hundreds of thousands, it's millions. And you first go up there and it's like, that's a huge figure. Well, actually, in the scheme of that authority, it's not. And it's the same here, isn't it? When you look at the figure, in the scheme of the authority, it might only be 1% or 2%. But you look at it and you go, if that was my money, well, it wouldn't be. I can't afford 700,000 bits, you know. Um, yeah, it, it's about that context, isn't it? Yeah. Andrew? Thanks, Chair. I think it's, it's also worth um, focusing on the, the, the current areas are really important because if they're escalating, mm. that then is an indication of other issues across, you know, campaign. Okay, yeah, and you know, we have seen a slight um, uptick in uh, in current uh, uh, tenancy areas, which I think is inevitable from from the current um, fiscal position that uh, the country's in. So, so it's, it's very important to keep keep tabs on both, and obviously sensitively manage both as well, which the team do. So what you say, Mr Barrett, is Tamworth Borough Council failed to predict a war in Ukraine? <laughs> <laughs> couldn't, couldn't possibly answer that. Uh, Councillor Cooper, do you want to have a question before we go back to Councillor Cook? Thank you. Actually, sorry. Councillor Cook had a question before Councillor Cooper. Chris Cook. Um... I think you might have already asked a little bit of this one, actually. <laughs> Literally, right just now. Um, this uh, rent arrears, you've obviously got the um, uh, table there. Um, the tenants on the Universal, which I've got rent arrears, if you look at that, the um, quarter four in the first and the second to last is actually rather low, whereas the rest of it is actually rather high. Is there any indication as to why there's less rent arrears during the then periods? Yeah, I thought, um, yeah. Andrew's just whispered to me exactly what I was thinking. I think that's the rent-free weeks we have at the end of the year because universal credit's smooth across the, across the year, uh, as all benefits are. But our rent year, we've added uh, a number of, of rent-free weeks. Mm -hmm. So the rent's still the same for the year, but it's, you've got a, a, week, uh, a couple of weeks off different times of the year. Uh, and I think we had this question before, and that's what clears that. That's the answer that. you've given before. Yeah. That's what clears that. Uh, it all reduces that in, in, in quarter four. Okay, thank you. Does that answer that? Yeah. Councillor oh, just, just a quick one on what um, Mr Barrett mentioned earlier with regards to the um, when rent starts to tip and not coming back to us. Is that a KPI? Is that, is, do we monitor that? Is, that? is there some kind of active mon monitoring of that? Because that, that seems to be, I, th I think you, you bang on right what you're saying. It's a very good indicator of further socioeconomic problems within the borough, isn't it? And it'll be a good indicator. It's a leading indicator as well, and that's why I ask. Uh, I'll, I'll let Andrew give the specifics on the on the KPI. But there used to be 
a really nice poster, for want of a better phrase, uh, on, on floor three of Marmion House, which showed the rent arrears continue being updated and showed year on year. Uh, so, so back in the olden days when we used pen and paper, that was, that, that was done on the wall live. Um, you're absolutely right uh, about it being an indicator, uh, and that's the reason way back uh, when, when I was sitting where Councillor Jay is now, uh, we started asking for the information on the number of people on universal credit to be shown with the number of people in rent arrears and also the number of people in rent arrears who were tenants who were on universal credit and the number of people who weren't tenants and, and were showing rent, uh, weren't on universal credit and, and, and showing rent arrears. Uh, because, like you say, it, it displays a number of other issues that we may need to tackle. And that's what we need to be smarter at is, uh, I don't want to use the word demand management, but it's certainly demand uh, uh, anticipation. So if we're seeing rent arrears going up, if we're seeing that is linked with universal credit claimants, like we had when universal credit was first rolled out, there was huge delays in processing universal credit uh, applications. Uh, and that causes a, a world of other issues. And as a council, we might not be able to control those, but we can certainly control how we deal with the individual who's in rent arrears. Yes. You know, so, so there are things we can do to, uh, to mitigate the impact, albeit limited. If we, if we can see things, things happening and, and spot things coming, we can, uh, we, we can uh, you know, prepare for them and, and prepare support. Do you want to pick up the KPI? Yeah, well, I wasn't, wasn't going to talk about KPI, actually. I said, the, the question really, I think, is, is this actively managed? Yes. We have a team of people that, that do this. Early intervention is always a key. Um, we would rather address it with individuals. Um, I think you, you've seen a very, very low eviction level across the organisation. Um, that's, that's actually a success because um, we work with people to try and manage um, any issues that they have. And getting in there early is much, much better than letting the arrears build up until they become a, a, a real problem. But unfortunately, it is part of the um, sort of the current economic environment we're in. Um, I'm sure we will see them rise again. Um, and we're, we're there to manage what we, what we can do. But um, early intervention is always our, our, our key to try and, uh, try and make it right. If I may, Councillor Jay, just add to, add to that early intervention. Uh, Townsborough Council has, has always been the same in terms of if somebody is struggling to pay a Borough Council bill, come and speak to the Borough Council because we, we, we won't refuse any payment and if there's a way we can manage things so, so, so they are able to pay and we're able to get the money, then we'll, then we'll work through it with them. Uh, but, uh, but the first point of call if anyone's struggling is contact the Council about, about the rent arrears and, and have that discussion. Do you want to come back and then you kind of raised and then... I was just going to say, without sounding too conservative, it's probably cheaper with the early intervention, isn't it? Then let it build on and then us go down some kind of other... So it, it's, it's probably more cost efficient. It, it's, it's not only uh, about the, the cost efficiency. Uh, if you look in the report, there's, there, was, there was two evictions during this period. Evictions cause a huge amount of issues for the individual and a number of issues for... For, for the local authority, because at the end of the day, regardless of whether we're a housing provider, we still have responsibilities in terms of housing allocation and homelessness. So, so yeah, if we can if we can do anything possible to avoid getting to that stage, we're we're we're, we're there trying to. Yeah. Is your question linked to this, or is it a different question? It's both actually, but I'll just link it first, then I'll show. Hey, can I just ask? Yeah, just just to Chris, say. Sorry, one second. Is Chris Cook is yours linked to this or different? Go on, then. Just, just going to say the other side of that when you say early intervention, absolutely. But when you've also got targets for recovery of court costs, it gets a little bit more complicated as you go down the line, actually. But yeah, I fully understand that. It's just, just a comment. Yeah. Councillor Chris Cook. Um, I mean, obviously, on the uh, rent arrears, etc., um, we have the uh, percentages on there anyway. Um, I think we also need to understand that although there's um, a, a rears as well, you will also get a few other people which are well seen arrears by work. Uh, 
week or something like that. So obviously then that's then um, kind of paid off and then obviously back in the rears again. Um, I think if, I mean, just as a uh, kind of comments, I mean, in any of the reports, would it also um, uh, kind of be a handy to like, um, Uh, kind of group it up a bit, uh, so if we can, um, just sort of show a bit of data if there, um, one week in the rears or uh, uh, yeah, quite a month in the rears or something like that. Uh, so then, if we have any kind of increase in the you know, over longer periods, then we can work out there, there is an issue there, but really isn't there. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Do you want to come in there? Yeah, I think your, your point's absolutely right, and um, and, and it's about it's about when we when we check, isn't it? You know, when, when we report, uh, uh, and, it, and it's it's about that phasing. So so the reason it's in the in, in a quarterly report is to give us that trend, mm -hmm. but you've still got that cut off date of, of, of when the reports yeah. called for. Um, what what I do know is, Townsborough Council is very quick when a tenant is, is in arrears at sending them a, a letter. I'm not going to comment on the, the tone of the letter. Uh, but they're very quick at sending a letter. And what I have seen many times, and we've discussed it at Scrutiny in the past, is letters have gone out because there's been a, a, a slight change in the payment date. So if someone gets paid on the last Friday of every month, blah, 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 that's fine. As a result, their rent wasn't paid on the 31st, it was paid on the 1st, and they get a letter, and that throws the figures out because of the phasing issue. So there will be some of that, but that's why we report it on the on, on the quarterly basis. Um, back to the point that Councillor Cook raised about the percentage, we'll, we'll have a look at that, and if that issue of phasing does skew that percentage, then we'll, we'll have to explain that, and we'll, we'll include that in, in the data. Uh, but like you say, in terms of grouping it as well, how much of that is long-term debt, how much of that is... Less than, less than three months, then yeah, I think that's uh, if we can get that data, that's something that, that would be useful. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you, uh, Councillor Cook. Danny Cook, back to you. Hey, Mr. Chairman. Last question, I promise. Well, maybe. Um, I'm, I'm fully going to respect both Councillor Oates and Mr. Barrett if they say to me there's a commercial sensitivity to this question and can they speak to me in private. However, I'm going to keep banging on with this question for a while. Uh, page 59, uh, review of swimming subsidy and future options. Key work screen, future of swimming subsidy and future options. Ticked nice and green, officer's name, no comments. What's, what's happening with the swimming subsidy? I've got a meeting next week, is it? I think it's next. I've, I've, uh, I've had a meeting request with uh, Anisha Goodwin and the lead officer uh, next week. To discuss that very matter so so there's been no uh, there's there's been no change to what it was at the time and we're, we're starting that process literally next week uh, so so it's not commercially sensitive at the moment we, we genuinely don't know what the situation is until next week have, happy to feedback uh, and have a chat after that meeting if you want to yeah. okay thank you any other questions before we move on any other comments no okay so the report includes a recommendation as normal for the committee to endorse the report. Can we have a mover and a seconder? Moved by Councillor Chris Cook, seconded by, was that a second? Don't know, we'll give Andrew Cooper. Thank you. All those in favor? Yep, yeah, thank you. And of course it goes with the usual uh, page or two that shows everything we've discussed so the cabinet can see the kind of questions we've been asking as well. So, thank you both very much for attendance. You're welcome to stick around or to leave if you wish. Thank you. Uh, the next item then is Corporate Scrutiny Work Plan. Um, we've currently got penciled in for the 6th of October, the Draft Asset Management Strategy, Gungate Regeneration Programme Terms of Reference, and potentially, depending on what we get back, this Environmental Health Compliance update if i've worded that correctly that feels like there's there's quite a lot there's enough on there to, to not add more to that 
Um, the question really is for looking further ahead, is there anything in the TBC at the bottom you want moving around? Or are you happy to, to leave in as it is? Councillor Cook. Yeah, thank you, Mr Chairman. I think one of the tragedies we have as a committee, and it's something I think we, we can fix very easily, is as I've done this evening, I've spotted a problem in the quarterly performance report and I've asked for a future meeting and update come to ensure it's not going to continue to be a problem. As Councillor Cooper's rightly raised, there's a lot of boxes in here that are in red that say at the minute problematic, but we never ever seem to fetch those issues back to scrutiny. Our key issue as corporate scrutiny is to scrutinise the quarterly performance report. This is the performance of Tamworth Borough Council against its own indicators and corporate plans. What we need to start being better at is, and if it means more means, it means more means, that when we spot something red and several others have got questions about it, Let's demand some of these from the technical department, whoever it's housing, accounts, assets, comes in and takes us through what the problem is. Because if we're going to scrutinise the quality performance report, let's scrutinise it. You know, so as I've done this evening, I've raised one that gave me concern. And as soon as I said this, your compliance, I saw Councillor Cooper's ears prick up. Because it does sound like an horrific comment, doesn't it? So it just, just some food for thought for the committee that, you know, when you see something red, let, let's demand somebody come and speak to our next meeting and say, you know, why is this a problem? What are you doing about it? Is there any help we can give? Whatever. I'm just throwing that out there because that's what I did this evening. Yeah, I think it's a fair, fair comment. I, I don't think we shied away from it particularly um, before. Sometimes you've had written updates and that's satisfied um, the need. But, yeah, if, if there's something we want calling back, we should call it back. Absolutely. Councillor Chris Cook. Um, it's, it's only a uh, kind of comment, really. Um, just on the um, on the uh, s s s market update. Um, although we've got it on there, uh, is it possible for us to actually invite a uh, s s s s representative over as well uh, from the market? Uh, so obviously we. Uh, to listen. To them as well. Are you uh, any issues which I've got on there as well? Yes, yeah, so I think what, what we've looked at bef before was the idea of that item was to look at the the performance of the contract against the, the tender, what was in the tender. So you reckon that's, Matt, that's Matthew Fletcher? Yeah, this is what was raised at the last meeting. I know John was very eloquent on the subject. Obviously, uh, the market was retended last year and uh, LSD Promotions won the contract for the market again, as nobody else technically bidded. Um, basically, within that contract is written that there are three monthly update meetings between our lead officer who manages the contract, Matthew Fletcher, and LSD to look at how better the market is promoted, how it's performing, how many stalls are let. And I think we need to get you know those professional officers here so we can throw those questions out on how is the market being managed, what are the plans for improvement, etc. Because those meetings are taking place three monthly, but we're not hearing about them. And so yeah, I, just, I think absolutely agree with Councillor Cook that you know let's get the professional officer in and ask these difficult questions. So that, I mean, that's why we've got it on here, but we haven't scheduled it in. So should we schedule that for, try and pencil in for November or something? And anyone else, dis anyone disagree with that? No? Okay. Let's pencil that in then and we'll, we'll see what we get back. Councillor Goodall. Thanks, Chair. It's in the, it's in the minutes from, from the last meeting that uh, Matt Fletcher would come to committee and we would discuss it on quarterly. So it's... So just to confirm. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Anything else on the work plan? Councillor Cooper. Might be a bit of a stupid, silly question, but um, just having a look through my own eyes. Um, biannual updates for the Solway Trading Company update. Um, the meeting when item added to work plan is December 2019. That's uh, nearly three years ago now. Is that is that a date that needs to be changed? Is it a work item that needs removing or something needs to be updated? So that's when it's added here. We've had updates. So it's, it's come on the agenda and come back off, come on, go back off. And then as we've heard tonight, there's potentially other plans with it. So it, it will probably end up just, just coming off. But we, we've left it on there for now to see what comes out of these discussions and then see where to go from there. Councillor Cook. Yeah, um, this is something I was raising earlier. Um, obviously, Solway Trading Company is a private limited company wholly owned by Tamworth Borough Council. The only thing it's done for the last five years is cost us £3,000 a year in accounting fees just to keep the company alive. We keep it there in case there's an opportunity to use it. Like if we had a piece of land 
and we wanted to build some houses for private sector rent, we could technically give the land to Solway Housing and then they pay us rent for the land. And it's, it, it's a way of trying to get away from some of the council's legislation. We all know councils have no business in business because the legislation that's dropped on us by the government makes it almost impossible for the council to run a business. We found that with golf course, we found it with peaks, we found it in so many places that the additional regulation we have to do and the way you have to be accountable to the public makes it very difficult to run a business profitably. By owning a limited company, there was potentially opportunities, but we could never find that opportunity. So it sat there for three years doing nothing. So I think this will drop off at some point because I don't see Solway ever doing anything because it was a nice idea that we just couldn't quite make work. Yeah, and then what this item on here has done is it's meant that twice a year we've called someone back in to, to say well, what's the update, basically. Yeah, just so it's not forgotten. If it's not on there, it's quite easy it's just to have a year go by and forget all about it. That's probably where it'll go, yeah. Anything else? No. Nope. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for the input. 7.12, and that concludes the meeting. Thank you very much.